When lawmakers convened in January 2009 to begin the 111th Congress, for the first time in our history, every dollar of revenue to be collected had already been spent. Before anyone even raised a hand to take the oath of office, that year's revenue was gone. And with that, lawmakers had little flexibility to respond to new challenges or set their sights on new priorities. Now sadly, each new Congress since then is just as stuck. So how did we get into this mess? Well, we all know the tax revenues fell during the deep recession of 2007 to 9. Americans lost their jobs. They also started claiming unemployment benefits and food stamps. But the Great Recession is not the main culprit. It only accelerated a problem that had already long been set into motion. And the heart of the problem stems from both political parties' attempts to control the future long before it arrives. Politicians today, uniquely in our nation's history, try to influence not just this year's budget, but the budget for many years and indeed decades to come. On the spending side over the decades, lawmakers have created and expanded programs paid for through what is sometimes called mandatory spending. That is spending that is defined and mandated by past laws, uh, past enactments of past Congresses. Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid benefits are provided automatically each year, and indeed are increased automatically each year without needing any acts of Congress. In a sense, these and some other programs have a life all their own. On the tax side of the ledger, lawmakers have tried to make permanent a tax system that does not raise enough money to pay our bills. Many lawmakers have pledged never to raise taxes or to only raise taxes for a handful of people, even though this increases interest cost more and more into the future. On top of this, the tax code has many revenue reducing provisions, like the mortgage interest deduction, like breaks for health insurance, that also grow automatically and are permanent parts of the code. Now to try to show how this has played out over time, Tim Roper and I have traced how fiscal democracy, that is the ability of current voters and policymakers to decide how tax dollars are spent, has eroded over time. Looking at the data, you can see how much money is left over after these mandated spending and interest costs on the debt are paid each year. The budgetary cushion has clearly thinned as the number and size of programs that were enacted by past Congresses and by past lawmakers and the tax advantages that we inherit from the past continue to grow without any new act or appropriation of Congress. By the time the Great Recession hit in 2007, we had gone negative for the first time in our nation's history sending out more money automatically than was scheduled to come in. Now, we'll see a little improvement as the economy recovers, but in the long run, fiscal democracy continues to shrivel. If you go back in our history, up until even two or three decades ago, Congress would debate the merits of programs. They would increase, extend, reduce, or cut them entirely. And then they'd repeat the process year after year. Now, our deficits are built in and growing. Spending for the biggest domestic programs increase automatically. People live longer, claim not only retirement and health benefits for more years, but ever higher levels of benefits from generation to generation. Health costs are rising even faster than incomes. Now, if we could somehow make the economy grow faster, would that solve our budget problems? Well, unfortunately not. It's true. The economy grows faster, revenues grow faster, but the spending for these uh, mandatory programs is on such an autopilot that they head upward when income rises. They do this because health costs rise even faster when income rises faster, 
and because retirement benefits automatically increase when uh, the income of the economy grows faster. Combining the self-perpetuating, expensive, and ever-growing programs with a tax code that's full of gaping holes denies us, the voters, the flexibility to make responsive and smart choices about today's and tomorrow's problems. The priorities set by policymakers in the 60s or the 80s do not define the needs of today. And yet, they do have top priority in our budget process. In essence, today's voters, particularly those among you who are young, are prohibited from making spending choices and tax choices for yourselves.